Merry Christmas and welcome to Mount Washington. Gorgeous day today. Well, not really, but the snow conditions are all right as heading up the lifts. And uh, Christmas, Christmas is this week. Excited about that. Make sure to join our Christmas Eve service to uh, 24th online all day long. And uh, it'll be a real special treat there. Over Christmas, this Advent, we're looking at the theme, this is Christmas. What's Christmas? Last week, we talked about the peace. Today, we're talking about a small known part about Christmas. Well, it's not that it's not known, it's just that it's underlying and not a major part of the Christmas story. After the resurrection of Jesus, he said, just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Jesus was sent to the earth. That's Christmas. That's what we're celebrating. And as we, we're going to look today and say, well, how was Jesus sent? Because if he's saying, just as I was sent, so I'm sending you, we want to ask, how was he sent? We'll look at three different aspects. We'll look at the humility of Jesus. We'll look at him, the location of where he came and the culture he came into. And then finally, the message that he came with. Now, put yourself in the living room, Christmas morning, presents all around, and uh, one of the toddlers, he unwraps a present and he quickly runs to his room, puts a tool belt on and his little hard hat and he comes back and he's got all this attitude and he says, ah, tough day at work today. And he sits on the chair, puts his feet up and says, I think I'm just going to relax while I watch the game. And then he breaks character for a moment and he says, I'm just like daddy. Right? Your heart's bursting with pride at that moment, just like daddy. And when Jesus says, I'm sending you just as I have been sent, that's what we're looking at, to be just like Jesus, to imitate him just as he was sent, he sends us. John 20, 19 to 22. On the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and then and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. A Christmas passage? No, it's after the resurrection. But he's talking back and he says, Just as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. Jesus was sent. We're sent in the same way. And the first area that we're going to look at, to emulate in our own lives is the humility of Jesus. Jesus was sent humbly. So what does that mean for us? That means a number of different things. First of all, the whole Christmas story, it's marked with humility, isn't it? There's no room in the inn, so where was Jesus born? In the stable. Not the best hospital, not the fancy palace, in the stable. And the angels, they were set to give a huge announcement. I don't know, had they been rehearsing for decades, hundreds of years, getting ready for this moment where they could announce that Christ the Lord had been born? Who were they sent to on their big debut for their monster performance? Shepherds, just the commoners. So when Jesus comes in humility, we can look at the position that he came in. He gave up his high position. So what does that mean for us? Just as he has been sent by the Father, we too are sent. Just as Jesus gave up his high position, we don't seek power. I don't know what it was like for the second person of the Trinity is in heaven talking to the Father and uh, making their plans. The time was about to come. Christmas was coming. and How's it going to be? Imagine if I could be a king. The policies I could make. Imagine the great power and privilege I can have as the Son of God coming to this world. I'll show them what is... The Father says, no. I'm sending you humbly. No great position then throughout his life, Jesus, people came to make him king by force as he was gaining popularity. He withdrew to lonely places. He says the last will be first and the first will be last. 
He didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus says, don't call people teacher and Lord, lording over these high positions. You only have one teacher and Lord. How many times do you want to make a name for yourself? Just as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. Jesus didn't come with a name, power, privilege, position. We like to make a name for ourselves, for people to think well of us, to give us a spot, to, to recognize us, to uphold our name. If someone even hints at correction, what do we usually start with? But, right? We want to justify ourselves. We want to explain ourselves. And as we look at Jesus, we don't have to seek power. We don't have to justify ourselves because he's the one who justifies us. And that makes us willing to admit our faults. You know what? You're right. What I did, I blew it. I was wrong. What kind of person's quick to say that? Someone who sees that Jesus left his high position in heaven, came and humbled himself to be born as a man in a manger and then lived the perfect life, but then gave that up too so that we could be forgiven. Jesus gave it all up. He was sent that way, so we're sent that way. Jesus came as a commoner, so we don't have to be a people pleaser. Jesus didn't come in comfort so we can find our satisfaction Elsewhere, we don't need the comforts of this world because we have one who truly satisfies us. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Humility. How does that play out in your life when it comes to a name, a position, an authority? Think that through, work it out, make it practical in your life. Another aspect of humility is that Jesus, he gave up his position of great riches, came and put on human flesh, became a man. He didn't come into riches, but a regular family. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Jesus came in poverty, so we don't have to seek riches. And imagine what Jesus could have done. He could have leveraged the strength of riches and power he could have walked with all the who's who of everybody and been in the palace and done all the influential things. Instead of walking with the movers and shakers of society and fitting in with them, he lived a life of poverty. Normally we think, how do you care for the poor? With great wealth. Jesus could have had all the wealth. He could have really cared for the poor. He could have made the policies and changed the world because money talks. But Jesus came with a different plan. He gave it all up and trusted that the way of God is best. In fact, Jesus came to give up his entire life to the point of death. Because through death, he conquered the grave to bring us new life. And as we come to know Jesus and trust in him, it sets us free from the riches of this world, finding our, our worth, our satisfaction there. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Jesus came in poverty. We don't have to seek riches. And imagine your own life being free from the love of money. Not money altogether. We need money to function, to, to work in life. But usually we think that freedom, freedom 55, it's having enough that you don't need to worry about it anymore. But what if we spun it around and saw that freedom actually comes from having faith in the one who owns everything. The one who cares for you and provides for you and has everything. Then, when it seems like I don't have enough, our Father, give us this day our daily bread. We have the most resourceful one to turn to. Jesus is our model. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Jesus was sent in poverty. We can live, live a life free from the love of money and trusting in him. That's our attitude. Humility. Humility not by, marked by position of authority and power or, or seeking after wealth. But there's other areas that we want to look up at when Jesus was sent. Jesus, he was sent to this world. We're going to look at the location. We looked at our attitude, now let's look at the location. Jesus was sent into this world to take on flesh to be one of us. He came to a specific culture and a language so that he could be understood. 
Now imagine the different possibilities Jesus could have had communicating with this world. Huge writing in the sky, booming voices for everyone to hear, 3D holograms, a special podcast specifically for you. Yet Jesus didn't come with that sort of announcement. He had the cries of a baby. He learnt, walked as a toddler. He learned the language and the local expressions. He dressed like the people around him. He sounded like them. He ate their food. He socialized with them. Jesus was a born a Jew, a Jew inside and out, incarnate, God with us. He came as a man in the local culture of the day. He listened to their music, danced like them, laughed at their jokes. Now, why does this matter? Jesus became human so he could identify with us to show us that the physical realm, there's this evil, that our bodies are super important, made in the image of God. But there's this resurrection that's coming just as Jesus is the first fruits of that. He made forgiveness possible. And Jesus came to live here. And just as Jesus was sent, so are we. Jesus sends us in the same way that he was sent. Now, Jesus said the exact same thing earlier in the book when he was praying for us in John 17. He doesn't pray that we're taken out of this world, but that while we're in this world, we'd be unified, be protected from the evil one because we are sent into the world. We're sent ones. Are you living your life with the mindset of a missionary? If you had to join someone overseas, to go to a new culture, learn a new language, you think about how do you dress? What type of house do you live in? What's the schedule of your day? How do these people think? What are their values? And you enter into that so that you can live with them and communicate with them. Now, knowing that Jesus was sent, he also knew where he really belonged. He came to this world and lived in the culture, but he knew who his real father was. He knew where his real home was, and that set him free so that he didn't have to join into the evils of the world. He didn't have to kind of do everything that everybody else does. And yet, he was still an insider. Do you take on the mindset of a missionary? Knowing that you're sent, you're here in this world. That means you don't just huddle together with others that are like-minded, but rather you're always branching out because we're sent into the world. And in this world, yes, we need protection. We need to be unified together because we're different. We don't really belong here. But as Christians, we're sent here to live here, to be with the people, to walk alongside them, to join them in their laughter and in their grief. And we need Christians in every aspect of society. We need followers of Jesus in your neighborhood, in your workplace. Like, wouldn't it be ludicrous if we all just huddled together in our own little commune supporting each other? Jesus announced that the kingdom of God was at hand. And so as citizens of that kingdom, it's crucial for Christians to be in the education system, in the public sectors, in the arts, in the trades, in the thinking realms, in the medical systems. We need Christians in every part of society. Because as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we're sent to each of these areas of this world, to your neighborhood, to your family. And that's why Jesus didn't just write a message in the clouds so that everybody knows all about him. He came and he walked with people. He ate with people, he cried with people, he danced with people, he sang with people. And Jesus has sent us. We're his ambassadors living in every part of society. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. When we read John 20, Jesus comes and he is announcing his resurrection. And the disciples, they're hiding in fear. They're behind locked doors. Jesus enters into their midst. And he announces peace. As Jesus comes, our fears are taken away and he brings us peace. It's the location. What's your location? Jesus, he went to Israel to be a Jew. Here you are in the Comox Valley, Campbell River, Royston, different places that you live, wherever you are. Jesus has placed you there. He sent you there. And that brings us to our last point. We talked about our attitude of humility. We talked about the location of where you're at. And now the actual message. That's our last point. 
Jesus says, just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. He was sent in humility to a place with a message. If you send someone on an errand, it's important they represent you well. It's important they go to the right place. But really, it's the message that you send them with, isn't it? Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus saves. Emmanuel, God with us. That's the message. This is Christmas. Jesus coming into this world to be our Savior. And he didn't just announce the message. He lived the message. Because he was sent on a rescue mission to make the message a reality. Christmas is the beginning. God showing up on the scene. But it's Easter where the message really unfolds. When Jesus died and was raised to life for the forgiveness of our sins to give us a new life. When Jesus says, just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you, we see that Jesus came to save us. And so we're sent with that message. He carries on in John 20. If you forgive anyone their sins, they're forgiven. Why? Because of the work he did on the cross. So three points with the message. The first is Jesus saves. We need saving. Each and every one of us. Doesn't matter who you are. When you We've been sent with a message. There's three aspects I want to look at. The first is Jesus saves. We need saving. It doesn't matter who you are. You need saving. Whether you're rich or poor, whatever culture or language you speak, whatever baggage you had, if you've had a squeaky clean life with everything going your way, or it's just been trauma and turmoil all the way through, we all need saving. Jesus came and he lived the perfect life that we can't live. And he died as the perfect substitute in our place, taking away our sin. Jesus says he came to seek and save the lost. Now, God hates sin and cannot dwell with sinners. And God, as the holy and righteous God, will make sure that justice happens and he will punish sin. But in his great love, he gave his one and only son. God sent Jesus to take the punishment of sin upon himself, rather than it falling on you. And that's what the Christmas message is all about. And that's why we celebrate so well. God coming to be a man to take away our sins. That's why Jesus was sent. Jesus saves. We need saving. Have you looked to Jesus for salvation? He's the answer. He's your only hope. It's a life changer. Look to Jesus for salvation. When we do, he makes us new. He cleanses us and washes us clean and removes our sin so that we can start fresh. It's all about what Jesus accomplished on the cross, not how you can clean up your own life. Jesus saves. We need saving. That's the first part of the message. Next part of the message is Jesus saves and we don't. This is important for us. He is the Savior. We're not. Yes, we're called to go with a message. We're called to present Jesus to others, to love others, to help others, to go into the lives of others and walk with them. But we're not the savior. We're not the rescuer. And it's so freeing when we can lose that mentality of the weight of the world on our shoulders. We can serve and we can love and we can join others. We want to keep in mind who the savior is because he's the only one that can change lives. That takes us back to the first point of humility, right? Because we need to humble ourselves and say, you're right, I can't change lives. Because sometimes I want to know that I can, that I make a difference. Now, we can't run a good enough programs in our church and have the best arguments for who God is, and we can't do enough good things to save ourselves or others. That's why we look to Jesus as the one who saves, not us. Our third message is Jesus saves, and that's our only message. And we're given the Holy Spirit with power. So when Jesus says, I'm sending you, that's great. We're sent as his witnesses and ambassadors. We have a message. We give this verbal testimony about what Jesus has done that changed our lives. But he hasn't left us alone. 
He's given us the Holy Spirit. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. And as you speak, the message is going out. You're not the savior. You're just the messenger. And so speak. Take that message. Who's God placed in your life? You can share that message with. Tell the Christmas story. Remind people that Christ is our savior. He could be our Lord. And that great message of Christmas. Our attitude is humility. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. With the attitude of humility, we're not seeking after power, authority, money. That's the attitude. Just as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Where was he sent? Jesus, walking amongst people, living with people, sitting beside people. Who has God sent you to? What circles has he put you in? And finally, the message. You're not the Savior, he is. We all need saving. Take that message in great power. So join us for the Christmas Eve service. Send the link to some friends. Talk it through with them so you can have some good starting point to talk about the Christmas message. Shine the light of Jesus everywhere you go. This is Christmas.